What's going on, guys? Welcome to the newest episode of Eat, Speak, Compete, a podcast where we talk about everything going on in the esports and gaming space every single week. My name is Jason, your host as always, and joining me, my co-host, Luke Shimona Hebrew. Welcome, my man, to episode number 12. How we doing? Good. Excited as always. It's Monday. Uh, yep. We're cruising in for another good week of esports. You know, with Worlds obviously coming a to an end. packed week of esports. With Worlds coming to an end, though, you know, it's one of those things where we're almost like, well, what's next? And mm -hmm. the answer is a lot. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on. We're going into holiday season. Holiday season's always been one of my favorite times of year for esports because, you know, in the past we've seen things, you know, like you get the, you know, you get the end of the Capcom Pro Tour. You get um, our All-Stars from League of Legends. Yep. You know, who knows what we'll get from Valorant this year. Obviously, we're going into the World Championship for them. So a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of really cool fighting game tournaments in general in December uh, tend to take place. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited for that as well. But um, it's good. Busy time as always. And, you know, now we're just kind of, I guess it's a busy time because we're really ramping up for a busy time. Yes. You know what I mean? But overall, it's uh, it's good. Excited to be here. we got some great topics for the day. So. We do have uh, a lot to talk about. Uh, I do want to give one warning at the front, and I will give you another one before we talk about it, but obviously Riot's new animated series, Arcane, did premiere this weekend. Luke and I have both watched the entirety of Act 1, and we are going to do a fairly spoiler-heavy discussion of it at the end of the show. So if you haven't seen it yet, first of all, what are you doing? Yeah. Go get Netflix. Go watch it. Uh, but if you don't want to get spoiled, I will, again, give you another warning before we have that discussion. It will also be the last topic we talk about the, on the show. So you can listen to everything else, all the esports gaming news. And then when we get to the arcane spot, you can just turn the episode off and go watch it for yourself. Or just you know, pause right now, go watch it, and come back. Boom, bam. That does it for the spoiler stuff. Uh, let's start at the top. Let's talk about blizzard mm. um our luke, favorite luke, dumpster fire luke dragged me into his office last week when this happened it was just like you gotta look at this and uh a bunch of big news out of blizzard uh first of all overwatch 2 and diablo 4 both delayed <gasps> uh and another big piece of news jen o'neill who was brought on uh to head blizzard alongside uh mikey barra back in august is leaving See you. So it's been three, not even, maybe not even three months. Yeah, and I would put it more in weeks. Yeah, right? <laughs> We're like, oh, eight to ten weeks, <laughs> and Jen O'Neill is gone. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, we can go back to a, a previous discussion we had about the next season of Overwatch League being delayed and how there was so much pushback from Blizzard. And now it's looking like there was more credibility to that, and even if it won't be delayed... They'll be playing on an unreleased game. It's just a mess at Blizzard right now. Yeah, I'll start with the games being delayed. No idea. Yeah. No idea what's going on. Like, they have such strong IPs. Obviously, there's been a lot of, like, crazy stuff going on. But still, it's like, they have to sell the product. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, like, you have to, like, continue development and all these kind of things. And they have all these developer leads leaving. Like, I know the lead designer or lead uh, creative officer or whatever or you can mm -hmm. insert whatever their title is there, left Diablo. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably why that one's getting stunted. But it's just like, I don't know what they expect or like what the future could even potentially hold or like what direction they go, right? Like Overwatch League was a dumpster fire. Mm -hmm. Overwatch itself as a game was a dumpster fire. They just basically like let it burn. Like their, like their primary community built game, Hearthstone, they don't even talk about. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you want to uh, mention the fact that Hearthstone wasn't even on the press release? Like, they do this press release. With all their games. The ga with all the games. And it's, so it's, wow, Overwatch. Uh, Diablo, Diablo. Starcraft. Uh, and, <laughs> and Candy, Candy Crush. Crush. Call but, of Duty. Like, but no Hearthstone. <laughs> like, Hearthstone just gets completely left out of the mix, which is just like, it so just blows my mind yeah. what is going on at Blizzard. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea. Um, again, long term, long time Blizzard fan. Yeah. No clue what's going on. I, I can't see them pulling themselves out of this and having a game be successful. Like I would be, like Diablo Four comes out. Are people gonna actually rush to buy it? Like I don't know. Like I think I would. I'd be. I would be. I would feel like I would have to buy it because I would want to play it so bad. But I'd, I'm just curious. Like I don't. I honestly don't know. Like where anything could even go from here and like what what you know future could hold for them it almost feels like they should take like a nintendo route and just like stop trying to make competitive games and just like have themselves a good old time you know just completely ignoring the competitive side of things and make, try to make things just like obtainable because yeah. like i can't think of a single one of their games that isn't daily losing uh players like even Van call of duty vanguard's been getting some yeah. 
not great love yeah. from like the people who are playing and just that it's another extremely repetitive close your eyes and run down the middle of the lane so holding you're your me spray it's call of duty, it's call of duty. <laughs> um but honestly i'll just starting on the, the the game side i'm just disappointed and sad and i just wish that they could turn it back on but it's going to take a lot more than just some new designers and stuff to get um, their internal community stuff back on track so that's pretty rough and then obviously with jen leaving like no surprise i guess but to have to have someone of a such a powerful leadership role especially of of being a female too mm -hmm. right like coming into the space and being all we're diverse here's our new female co-leader wow look at this revolutionary change thanks for the eight weeks see you later like i'm i don't even i don't even know like how to put my thoughts into words because of how just astronomical it is yeah so i don't know it's pretty i would say i would just basically i'm just sitting in a throne of disappointment over here i'd say is where i'm at on the game front i would say initially uh seeing because we've seen a bunch of delays for like big titles over the last couple of years and yeah. obviously covid has had a lot to do with that of course and i would say initially i wasn't a fan of it and then the more things have gone on i've i've very much softened on this uh especially because we've seen games come out you know so often over the last few years in an unfinished state and it's for a, a multitude of reasons whether it's uh, the developer or, or you know the publishers not giving the developers enough time or enough resources invested in it um, and so my knee-jerk reaction a lot of the time is like hey if it means the game comes out in a good state oh I'm take fine. your time take your time absolutely I don't disagree with that at all but. yes <laughs> but it would seem that it is less covid related and more that literally blizzard is just on fire yeah people are leaving left and right and so while i don't necessarily blame like the boots on the ground people who are putting the time into the game when i look at blizzard management as a whole i'm like what are you guys doing and i agree when you have someone come into such an integral position in the company a leadership position in blizzard and is out in less than three months i think that is an incredible indictment of what is going on at blizzard right now and i think it's interesting that you you ask that question about diablo when it releases you know are people going to be rushing to buy it and i think the fact that you would even ask that question shows that something is really wrong because i think for blizzard titles and diablo specifically as an ip you would never ask that question right you'd yeah. be like diablo is such a beloved franchise so many people love it so many people have been dying for a new diablo game that you'd be like for years you'd be like no there's no way no matter what happened everybody's going to come back and play diablo but i would say especially with what has happened over the last six months at blizzard i actually think that is a legitimate question to ask and it wouldn't surprise me if there was a significant worse significantly worse performance sales wise from diablo because fans are just fed up with blizzard and what they've been doing yeah you know i i i, I almost wish that that would happen just so that we could like really show that it's like that the gaming community in the world isn't just like you can't just do whatever you want you know and, what i mean and like, that would be the thing to do right would yeah. be convincing people to be like hey but don't you think that like because of you know we'll take like crip like riparian Kriparian, right mm -hmm. giant streamer came from like almost pretty much gained the majority of his notoriety from uh blizzard titles being diablo and hearthstone yep um you know he's like one of the original like um hardcore you know diablo killers from diablo 3 um like how do how do how do these influencers not snag the bag like when diablo 4 comes out i feel like just because of its its history that the influencers regardless are going to pick it up unless of course the community rallied behind the opposite right sure but i i, I mean i don't know just to, looking at the bag that probably will exist when this when it does happen and if that happens and all the streamers are playing it they're gonna make a make a bajillion dollars like they do every year on call of duty mm -hmm. and then two months later the game's gonna hard die hard yeah. die and that's almost worse because now it's like the gaming community is just like funding Blizzard mm -hmm. to spend 10 years making a game that nobody actually wants to play just because it has the IP that we all grew up on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, I feel like we might be, I feel like we might be in for a round of very unplayable gaming titles. Yeah. I would say that I would definitely understand if there was a significant contingent of the community that came out and said, Hey, we shouldn't be buying this title you know we should be 
joining together to try and show Blizzard. And, you know, you talk about it all the time with uh, when, you know, people come out with, like, political opinions that people don't agree with or whatever. And it's always, like, you got to hit them in the wallet. you got to hit them in the sponsors or whatever. And when it comes to game developers, if you want to get a message across, it's you just have to not give them your money. Yeah. You can't buy the games. And I would say that anybody that wants to do it shouldn't be faulted. If you've been waiting all this time for Diablo 4, you're dying to play it, whatever, when it comes out. But if the community wants to send a message, you just can't give Blizzard your money. You have to show them, like, hey, we're not going to stand for the kind of stuff that you guys are doing, the culture of the company, uh, the state that you want to release these games in. You know, hopefully they, considering the delays, should come out well done, right? These are Blizzard titles, and there are rightfully high expectations. But... If that doesn't happen, then the community needs to make their voice heard in one way or another, and typically that's the best way to do it. Yeah, I, I, def I don't disagree. It's definitely going to be a kind of wait-and-see type of vibe, yeah. um, but I can't say there's a lot of surprise going on. <laughs> Just more, I mean, we have, I don't, I don't know that we've gotten to talk about any good news from Blizzard since we started the podcast in 12 episodes. Dude, if we, and if, I would love to talk week, about good Blizzard news. If there's a but... week of good Blizzard news, it's the whole show. Yeah. We're just, we're just, we're Front just going to, back. Yeah. <laughs> We, we would, Blizzard, we would love to hear. We would yeah. love to get good news from you guys, but yeah, just we'll... Se just separate from Activision. We're not holding our breath. <laughs> run, um, run from Activision, please. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so, Worlds just finished up, and obviously we'll dive a little bit more in depth in how things finished up over there. Um, but in the, in the lead-up to the finals, and this is a discussion that happens really every year around Worlds, uh, and it's the format. And... Uh, Interestingly enough, the global head of esports for Riot, John Needham, actually addressed the issue and said, uh, quote, that Riot will definitely consider a double elimination format for Worlds. Uh, obviously, double elimination is actually a format used for the playoffs in the LPL in China. It seems to work incredibly well out there. There is, I think, a lot of hunger from significant parts of the competitive community that you know, especially considering that, like the Valorant World Championship got confirmed recently and that they will have a double elimination format. So I think people feel like, hey, this is the best way to do it. And this is the biggest esports tournament in the world. It should have this. Uh, and I would say, well, I'm not, this is another thing I'm not holding my breath on because Riot has said they will consider things before and then never address it again. But I would say it is at the very least promising to know that the head of esports for Riot said, hey, we're looking at this at the very least. Are you telling me that there could be a 10-game Grands? Because I then... don't know about that because that's... <laughs> I, I, I will JC. agree. <laughs> I will agree. That is... It would have to be over two days. Because mm -hmm. that's the thing is you can't do two best of fives... In one day. In one day. It's the same team. For League of Legends. No way. Can't happen. Uh, just a single best of five that runs four to five games is incredibly exhausting. I, you know, I can say that from experience and I didn't have to play on a stage in front of thousands of people in front of millions of people worldwide in with millions of dollars on the line and i've found them exhausting so you know there would i would imagine a double elimination format for worlds would include a non-double elim final that would have some form of advantage for the team coming out of the winner's bracket like a 1-0 vibe a 1-0 or maybe they get you know it's gotta be side choice right? the first two games or something like that mm -hmm. you would definitely have to do that but i would say you know taking a step in that direction i would certainly support it would mean more knockout stage matches for worlds which i'm all about i would also love to i mean we can look at this year's format imagine you know if we got a rematch of edg rng or or another t1 yeah. damn one or maybe it was t1 versus gen g to like get back up to the upper bracket or something like that i think would have been incredible so i think double elim is a great format it's not perfect no no format is but i think that the single elimination format that is currently set up does not give you the best tournaments you could possibly get out of league of legends i think that's pretty interesting because like you know if i contrast it to like sports sure right like which i think is like you know fair and not fair as always uh but just to play like devil's advocate right if we're talking about real sports or physical sports if you will or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it um you know it's kind of interesting because like 
you get a you know five game or a seven game World Series or whatever. Mm-hmm. Eleven. Yeah, game yeah World seven. Series. Seven game World Series, oh, and it's like I was like, wait, what am I talking about? There's too many of them. Um, you get like a seven game World Series, and it's like, oh, like I didn't play my best. You know, it's like mm-hmm. that. That's what you get paid to do. You know what I mean? Like sure. you're paid athletes, the best in the world at this point, to perform at your best. You know, so in a double elimination bracket, it's almost like we're just assuming that a team wants a run back because they didn't perform their best in the previous in the previous match. Which, mm-hmm. although maybe it's a close match, maybe it's a game seven World Final or whatever it is, or World Series, or whatever it is. But just because it's game seven doesn't mean that it would have been a different result if we run it back again. Mm-hmm. So I guess just devil's advocate wise, it's kind of interesting to think about it when we're talking about this scale of gameplay. That it's almost like all the run back does is allow them to go back and study tapes. You know what I mean? Which I don't necessarily think is that relevant like they could have done that before you know what i mean like i don't know i think i think it's kind of interesting i kind of like the way that it is built out again because i think they should be able to perform their best they should have enough information on the enemy team and they shouldn't need two best of fives to be able to because there's no way to make it it's so hard to make it fair for the winner side like you tell me i didn't drop a set the entire tournament i lost the last one i lost yeah like that's brutal you know what i I mean like so just playing devil's advocate obviously i'm sure they could figure out a format that would be fair even the current world's format is extremely complex and and very well made in Mm -hmm. my opinion um so i'm sure they could do the same thing with a double elimination type concept but i do get a little worried in that sense when we're talking about the best athletes in the world i think the one thing that you get out of a double elimination format is i think you get a better shot that you have the best possible matchups happening at the end of the bracket. Um, I mean, I think while I would like a double elimination bracket, I think the the bigger issues with the world's format actually exist earlier in the tournament. Um, I think the way that teams are seated and split into groups is actually much more significantly flawed uh, than the way uh, the bracket works out. Like, I think there's no reason whatsoever and granted fpx obviously bombed out of their group but i actually think there's no legitimate reason that fpx and dan one should end up in the same group mm. i think that's actually actually ridiculous um and you know in the end we i feel like we did end up getting like i, I remember there's a ton of, of discussion after the t1 dan one semifinal series where people were saying oh that's the real finals and thankfully that did end up being true but we obviously luckily ended up with like the two best teams in the tournament at the end of the bracket. But I think that earlier on, I would like to see different seating, a different way to see the teams and groups, and also just a different group stage. Mm. Like I don't want double round Robin best of ones. Give me like GSL style groups. Give me a double elimination best of three bracket in each group, I think would be a much better format. So uh, I agree. And I think that you look at any format, there's going to be flaws, for sure. There's no perfect yeah. format out there. Um, but I would agree with you in so much that I think there are bigger issues with the world's format now than the lack of double elim in the knockout stage. So it's uh, a very interesting topic. I'm curious to see, you know, I at the very least hope that Riot discusses it and comes out with, you know, I think they do a, a good job of talking about a lot of different changes that they make to the game and like dev blogs and stuff like that. I would love to see an article talking about in the future their discussion and what their thoughts are on double elim and actually getting to hear what they think. Yep, I'm, I feel very similarly. Yeah, so. Uh, hey, that was some good information, right? You should listen to that conversation right there and take some ideas from it because we nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, let's be clear. I'm not the one that came up with different seating and GSL groups, groups but I think it is hmm, uh, a pretty GSL. universally loved and just better format. You ever watch like GSL like back way back in the day? No. I used to watch GSL on Gom.tv <laughs> for StarCraft II at like 3 a.m. There you go. I'm OG, boys. Throwing <laughs> it back. Throwing it back. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more Riot right now before we hit the world's discussion later on in the show. Um, bit of a snafu for Riot last week. Uh, Jacob Wolf mm. uh, from Dot Esports and Ashley Kang of Horizon came out with a statement uh, discussing some interesting practices from Riot because in the lead up to the World Championship due to obviously them having to shift the location due to COVID restrictions and all these kinds of things, uh, it came out that press was third party press was not going to be allowed at the event. Um, and I think while a lot of uh, press institutions were obviously disappointed, I certainly was, uh, it's understandable to an extent. Um, but then it uh, came out that Riot had in fact let in certain content creators and press institutions 
uh, specifically from China to the event. And so this statement came out basically talking about the fact that it was an unfair double standard that they had let you know folks in and hadn't uh, had, had communicated to uh, other press uh, companies, publications, and said, no, like there won't be people here. And uh, I think Jacob and Ashley did a really good job of saying like, hey, we're not mad at these organizations that were allowed to go. We're happy they were like, you know, press should have been allowed to the event, but were, they were just very specifically frustrated with the lack of communication from Riot and the fact that they said no and then let people in. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to like really understand that like the importance of things like worlds mm -hmm. for media companies like you know esports observer and like these kind of guys right like they that's like what they do every mm -hmm. day like they have this whole team of content producers and writers and editors and all that stuff that are trying to gather as much you know exclusive ask information mm -hmm. from you know these big gaming tournaments right and league of legends worlds obviously being something that you know is so huge in the gaming space and being able to get you know uh interviews with the players and all those kind of things like that makes and breaks news companies you know what i mean like you could if I was, like, the only North American news outlet at Worlds, like, I literally could probably grow a zero account to who knows how big, you know what I mean, and gain, like, a whole all this notoriety from just being the, the only guy who actually can get the yeah. interviews, right? So, I, I mean, for me, it's obviously, like, from someone who, if assuming I put myself in the shoes of me being, like, press and media in that sense, like, I would just be, like, so, like, disappointed that, like, I didn't even get an opportunity Sure. when it seemed like it just got easily handed off to others. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in the sense where we're talking like region-based, where it's like, oh yeah, only the Chinese content creators got to go in and it was in Iceland. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like that's a little sus. But if you flip the table, you also realize that Riot's owned by Tencent, Tencent's owned by the Chinese government. Yeah. Um, so when you put those things together, it also makes a lot of sense. So there could be more to the story if we're talking like political stuff. Uh, but regardless, I don't see any reason why, if they're going to let some Chinese media in, that they couldn't at least extend the same um, the same offer to some brands or some outlets from each individual region. Yeah. Even, I get that you can't let everybody in, right? You got COVID, limited people, this, that, right? Like, but maybe two reps per region like you know what i mean like they could have they could have i feel like done a better job of that and that could have even been like internal miscommunication on the riot side yeah you know what i mean like that could just be like riot north america and everyone's in the meeting they're like yeah there's no media at all and then riot china is always like is obviously like yes yeah you know what i mean so that and that could have totally happened so it could just have been like a you know the riot people being completely honest and some internal miscommunication caused this type of situation which is unfortunate but sure. regardless Riot shouldn't have made that mistake. So. And and I would say even even more so. Like obviously it's it's huge for these media publications, but I think it would also uh, it also indicates a bit of um, a lack of understanding from Riot's side in actually how beneficial this media coverage is for them as oh, a yeah. company and for their game. Right, having all these outlets at the biggest tournament in the world in your biggest event of the year, reporting on it, continuing to push content out about it in great content because. They're there getting pictures and video, interview with players, all this kinds of all these kinds of things is good for you as a company. These outlets reporting on your event is good publicity for you. So uh, I think it is a misunderstanding from multiple different sides and yeah. uh, a shame. I'm glad that Jacob Wolf and Ashley Kane came out and, yeah. and made the statement. I think it was really well written. I love what they said. Uh, and I hope that there is more, further transparency on these issues in the future. And I mean, granted, hopefully, Come next MSI and World Championship, COVID is dealt with enough to where, hey, we can just go back to normal, essentially. Um, but still definitely very frustrating to see uh, that coming from Riot here at the end of uh, what has been an incredible tournament. So disappointing on that. And let's talk a little bit Apex Legends. Mm. Uh, Apex revenue soars more than 150% on its way to a billion dollar per year revenue. Uh, season nine and 10 recorded uh, record player numbers. The highest player count since season one uh, was a big part of that. Uh, also Twitch viewership grew uh, as season 10's 130 million watch hours was 40% better than season nine. So Apex popping off right now for EA. I mean, I can't say I'm surprised, you know, obviously with everything they're doing, with the pro league you know mm -hmm. apex one of those games where it came out really really strong 
um, in the competitive scene, right? Took the whole battle royale genre by by storm, started throwing up lands, all these different components, then kind of really fell off for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but then they built like a really strong foundation, and now they're like slowly ramping up that foundation. They have, you know, literally a year ago they had there was no chance they could have run a pro league. They didn't even have nearly enough teams or interest in the mm -hmm. game at all. And now a year later, year and a half later. They got they have way too many teams. You got teams coming out of their ears. You know, right I mean, now, the viewership's too. going through the roof. All these influencers are getting involved. Mm -hmm. The game's evolving to a pretty good state and continuing. New content's coming out. New maps are coming out that are more competitive based. Right, it feels like they're listening to the community. They're giving people access to do scrims on their own. Right, like they're really trying. Super cool to see. So I can't say I'm surprised that their player base is going up. Yep. Well, of course, if your player base goes up, your revenue will go up. And uh, it's it, are we going to talk about it after this? Uh, no, do you want to talk about yeah. train right now? We can mm -hmm. talk about train, yeah. And so it's so funny because when, when we were talking about the, the revenue components of it, like the first thing that I thought of was like the train wreck incident that recently happened where I think he was playing in like a featured tournament or he was on a featured stream it was, or something. So it was Nick Burks was ho hosting a $50,000 tournament last week and train was invited, but I guess EA said no. And apparently it's due to the gambling streams that train does. Which is pretty interesting. Tra look. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to, okay, we'll start here. I'm not going to defend Train at all, right? Like, if you sure. watch Train, you watch Train, go for it, whatever it is. I'm not going to talk about whether or not I enjoy his content. That's not, now is not the time nor the place. Sure. But I think it is pretty funny because a lot of people online, especially Train, were drawing the, the correlation between gambling and Apex Legends because of the crate system, right? Because that, and you look at, like, FIFA, too, yeah, which FIFA, is another big moneymaker for EA. The moneymaker for yeah. EA, I think, <laughs> I would assume at least. I think it is um, FIFA and Apex right now are the yeah. big, big boys for them. So, and both of those are like exclusive loot crate vibes, right? Mm -hmm. And in loot crates, I think everyone's kind of come to the conclusion that it's gambling. Mm -hmm. I think we're all on the same page there, right? Again, this isn't an EA exclusive. Everybody has loot crates nowadays, and everybody um, kind of uses them in this sense. But to have such a disallowance of gambling when you exclusively profit based on gambling seems a little uh, seems a little double standardy in mm. my opinion especially since it's not like he was playing in the tournament and playing slots at the same time i would understand sure. i would understand some kind of restriction where it's like if you're going to do a, if you're going to do like a featured apex legends partner stream right yep. assuming that's what it would have been like an official ea partnered stream you can't gamble on sure. live on stream right like let's just say right you can't use official gambling websites like slots right yes i think that's a pretty fair statement mm -hmm. you know what i mean but if you're going to pay someone to open a thousand loot boxes on stream then is that not this are we not are we not crossing into like kind of kind of iffy territory like i, I don't know <laughs> feels like we're in a pretty similar neighborhood there <laughs> yeah and so you know i think it's pretty funny either way like i don't really think there's too much to do about it obviously i've dealt a lot with ea's legal team and i can tell you with enormous amounts of experience that it's because of the fact that it's so global and not regional mm -hmm. that ea north america is constantly dealing with a global hand in their cookie jar yeah which is a nightmare yeah right so i'm sure that it wasn't it wasn't an easy thing for the NA team to deal with, and I'm sure it didn't come from the NA team initially either. Mm -hmm. So that's something to probably keep in mind too. So you know, try to. I mean, if you're EA, mind, but... you probably would like a train Rex to be playing your game, right? He's an incredibly popular streamer, but there are some legal ramifications, tangles you'll yeah. get into with that. But the thing is, it's understandable. Like, but it's mostly extent. not North America again. Like sure. those legal issues, maybe they come from Europe or maybe they come from China or maybe they come from wherever. Yeah. But because of that, because of the way that their legal team works, it's like, oh, well, this thing happened in Europe four years ago. So we're going to now apply that to our North American sector sure. and be super strict about it. Like literally, we've ran into very similar issues like that with yeah. EA before. And I just stared at them for a couple of weeks until they it went away because I was like so <laughs> confused where I'm like, but I'm not in Europe. Like yeah. I don't want to follow their rules, you know? Like I don't care where you are. Yeah. Like, um, so I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if anything comes out of it. I, I don't by any means blame any brand for not associating with train wrecks. So that's a pretty fair, I mean, it really is pretty fair. Sure. Like if you, if you choose to be a villain in that sense, for mm -hmm. lack of better terms, then you also get the you backlash made, you made your it. bed you exactly you know what it, i mean you know? like so you don't get that but you got the next you got slots paying you millions of dollars so you take what you get you know we win some we lose some yeah interesting uh obviously still happy to see apex popping off uh, the game continues 
to peak. So it's it's crushing it. The competitive scene growing and continuing to thrive. So that's awesome. Obviously, a pleasure to get to be a part of it here with Esports Arena. So Woo. that's very cool. So we'll keep that. Yeah, uh, we're big fans of EA on. here. Yeah. So all love. Love, love, love EA. Uh, let's talk about another one of our friends, Walmart. Oh, yeah. What are they doing? Walmart, Walmart last week quietly listed Halo Infinite's Collector's Edition on their sites, and it pretty much sold out instantly, which does not surprise me. Uh, the Collector's Edition included quite, uh, quite a laundry list of stuff. An energy sword desk lamp, a plasma pistol bottle opener, a steel case for the game, five patches, two lanyards, a UNSC charm, an ID wallet, a mini art book, a desktop portfolio, and a developer note. Tons of stuff if you like Halo. Um, it was originally listed uh, retail for $170. We're now seeing resales popping up priced at about $350 plus. Um, and apparently, I think there was 10,000 units. Uh, some gamers, not very happy about it. Walmart sold 10,000 units in a day. They're feeling pretty good. Yeah, you know, I think it's... It's interesting, right? Because you think to yourself, well, they should have announced when it was going to go live yep. so that everyone had a fair chance to get it. But if they did that, would they have just crashed their own website? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. in today's age, like, when you announce something, almost anything. Yeah. Like, you could announce, who cares? Like, oh, Ninja's selling this, or, oh, Nick Merckx has a new that, or, like, whatever. And all of a sudden, it's like, X website crashes. Everyone's complaining on Twitter. Like, nobody understands <laughs> how anything works. So maybe quietly releasing stuff is like their hidden tech just to save their websites. Traffic. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, overall, I, I would have loved to see some more press and media around it. I know some other internally stuff because of how much we work with Walmart sure. that I, I can't really touch on too much yet. Stay tuned. Um, but overall, I think the package is super cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think that anyone who got it is going to love it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I saw a lot of people just saying that they're just going to play it on Game Pass infinite so a lot yeah. of people didn't even like pre-order and stuff so i'm sure that people who did pre-order just like giant halo fans who want all the collectible collectible stuff hate seeing the resale stuff scalpers can suck it always across the board like in anything anytime anyone's trying to scalp stuff they can just go sit literally anywhere else because yeah. i don't care <laughs> um it's crazy to me that it, scalpers exist especially in today's age which is 10 times worse than it used to be mm -hmm. um it's terrible i just wish there was enough product for people to buy it if they wanted it you know and that's what like that's what kind of bums me out, and I, I don't know, I, I tend to balk at this kind of stuff because, <laughs> bro, I, I am not made of money, and there's a lot of cool stuff like these that come out that I would, like, love to get, but I look at and I'm like, well, I don't have the money set aside for this now. Maybe in a couple months I could save up and grab it, so it bums me out, but I think it's, I don't know, I, I think there's cool stuff about exclusivity and limited stuff like this. It was just, like, it was, a, it was an issue I ran into for a long time with 100 Thieves, because 100 Thieves for years has always done these exclusive merch drops where there's a limited quantity they drop it it sells out in a day and it's super expensive and then it comes up you know scalpers reselling after and that always bummed me out and it was why i never touched any of their merch for so long because i was like this is crazy you know it, it always comes out so quickly and i never can get it before it sells out and it's always way too much and it's one thing that i've loved where they finally then came out with their foundations collection they're like hey this is always going to be here you can always get it this is not an exclusive drop so i guess stuff like that just isn't quite for me unless i know like long in advance so I, it just bums me out i agree I, I just wish you know if you want a copy you should be able to get a copy of these things yeah i mean it's pretty expensive overall you know what i mean <laughs> like i'm always just like double the price off the bat so yeah. that scalpers go away you know <laughs> like <laughs> it doesn't bother me but um yeah I think uh, I think overall it's a super cool package. I'm glad some people mm -hmm. got it. I'm no surprise that it sold out instantly, and I'm sure that uh, fans will have other chances to get some of those memorabilia items. I certainly hope so. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, let's talk. We talked a little bit about Nick Merckx earlier. Let's talk about uh, a big deal for him. He joins as an investor in Hyperice, which is a holistic high performance wellness brand as they are described uh, uh alongside some huge names some other investors uh if you're a traditional sports fan you may know know, know some of these connor mcdavid captain uh, of the edmonton oilers the nhl team rory mcelroy an incredibly popular pga tour golfer clay thompson from the golden state warriors jason tatum from the boston celtics and a bunch more nick Merckx in a crowd of athletes now obviously nick Merckx. Big workout guy, does his lifting streams, all that kind of stuff. So 
of anybody in the streaming space. He's kind of like the name that would immediately jump out, but uh, quite a big deal for him joining on with Hyperize. Super cool, fits his brand really well. Mm -hmm. I know the Hyper Ice guys a decent amount. They're dope, um, pretty local to us actually. Mm -hmm. We worked with them. We worked with them a little bit a while back actually, um, back when we were at our, our other facility. But um, overall, I think that Hyper Ice is a pretty popular brand in its category, and uh, picking up athletes like you know Clay Thompson, etc., um, probably does wonders. But picking up a, uh, someone like Nick Murphs, I'm so curious to see. Um, I guess why. You know what I mean? Like, I always ask myself, like, when people get involved in the gaming space, I always, I always wonder why. You know what I mean? Like, is their goal just to... Because High Price's goal probably isn't to reach a younger demographic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or it's probably... It's honestly just, like, probably general awareness of, like, you know, let's say gaming-related injuries, yeah. if you will. You know what I mean? Like, your hands and that kind of stuff. So... I guess I'm, I'm, I'm pretty curious to see what he ends up doing with it, what kind of educational components come out of it, sure. right? Because it's probably a very educational-based partnership, at least I would hope, um, more than it is like a sell these products, hashtag add this, that, you know what I mean? Like it's with him doing workout streams, with him being a controller player, all that kind of jazz. Like um, I, I hope to see some cool educational content, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we see all these influencers, we talk about it all the time. They're influencers, they influence. So it's hopefully the influence here. Um, is to take care of your body and, you know, that Hyper Ice's products, which are amazing, by the way, which we've used quite a bit here in this office, um, are really great for those, you know, various muscle muscle tensions and, and all that kind of jazz. So I'm a, I'm a big fan. Congrats to Nick Merckx. He just continues to crush it and build that infam life. And uh, I wish I could have gone to the barbecue. <laughs> yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense uh, when you look at the company and what you sell getting access to the fan bases of these incredible athletes across all these different sports makes a ton of sense, right? If they're using the products, they're, you know, kids that are fans of theirs, whether they're young or in high school or whatever, playing sports as well, they're going to want to use the same products. Makes sense. Kind of creates that pipeline towards getting more hyperized stuff. Uh, I am curious to see, I think like you mentioned, do they build some products around gaming in particular is there stuff like that to deal with you know carpal tunnel all these kinds of things where they aren't necessarily you know you're not breaking your legs or whatever gaming but there are certain physical injuries and stress issues that you deal with as as a, a, a gamer and i'm curious to see if they really lean into that now having nick on board uh, i think there is certainly an opportunity there and specifically when you look at the kind of reach that nick does there's an incredible uh, an incredibly large and dedicated audience there that you could tap into having him uh in the fold so we'll see how things work out but i think it's cool yeah no i agree i, I think that it's all it's all about how they go about the branding you know yeah. and i'll use one of our newer brands excedrin who mm -hmm. i think again like we were talking about this the other day that excedrin is for you know headaches migraines etc yep. right depending on like what what it is um but again, like their marketing, their branding isn't like have a headache, pop a pill, you know, like mm -hmm. that's like not their branding. Like their branding is in their, you know, all of their different media and all that stuff is focused around um, like body wellness. Right. And mm -hmm. making sure that you get enough sleep, you're preventative drinking, care, you're drinking enough, preventative like care. Mm -hmm. Right. It's all about doing your best to take care of your body so you don't get that headache. And if you do get the headache, we're here to help. Yeah. Right. So that's that's that's. You know, it's such a it's such a different type of experience in that sense. And Hyper Ice, I feel like, can fill a lot of that same void, right? Where it's like, you know, maybe there's not specific products, right? Maybe it's more just you still got the heat belts, they got the you know guns, <laughs> they got the vibration balls, right? All those different things, the, the rollouts, those kind of vibes. Um, and it's more about just you know stretching, icing after workouts, like that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, like those type of high level body maintenance things that you that you have to take care. Because again, we're talking like two to thousand dollar dollar products right like these are very expensive products that exist mm -hmm. you know like they're probably def i bet there's nothing less than like 200 bucks on there like i would be surprised if there were there might be i'm sorry if there is um i'm sorry if there's like super affordable versions now and i just sure. missed the wave but they're, they're pretty expensive products so i feel like uh, um in a similar sense they could have a lot of success educating and then it's one of those things where and if you're this level of athlete and you need to take that next step and you're these aren't enough it's like this is that next step when you're sure. ready for it. You kind of know what I mean. So I don't know. Just some thoughts. Definitely something to keep an eye on. I'm curious to see where that goes. Uh, let's talk some recent results. We had two big tournaments finish up over the weekend. Let's start with PGL Stockholm, the first CSGO major uh, since the start of COVID. And the man did it. He did it. Simple <laughs> is a major champion, beats G2 2-0 in the grand finals, uh, also grabs 
major MVP, and he's done it. The best player in the world, one of the uh, esports pros that really feels like he belongs in the conversation with a faker as like a greatest esports player of all time, and he's finally got that major title. I mean, you just nothing to say but congratulations, right? Because yeah. he's it was it was a well fought, well deserved, mm-hmm. a nice little comeback. We were I know we were watching it a little bit together on mm-hmm. Sunday here. Uh, we were here running the Halo show, and as soon as I got here, I meet it. It was just like put it on, put it on, <laughs> put it on. I, was watching, I was watching it at home, you know, carried it yeah. over. So uh, it was a blast to watch. Shout out to G two, good try. <laughs> Get him out of here, though. You know? <laughs> no, I was kidding. It's, Suck it, Carlos. Suck it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but honestly, it was super fun to watch. It was a great major. The production was incredible. Mm-hmm. The, the the venue was incredible. The the players just what was it like seventeen to nineteen to sixteen ending or something like? No, well it finished uh, twenty two to nineteen because it went to double overtime. Yeah, it was just it was just like it felt like it was going on forever, and it was yeah. just so they wanted it so bad, and it's so cool to see simply obviously finally win um, his major so he can hang his hat up. <laughs> Good old simple, yeah. Well, he's not done. He's <laughs> definitely not done, but finally has that major under his belt along with. A, a ton of other tournaments. Navi, congratulations to them as well. First major win uh, for that organization in a very long time, and uh, obviously incredible to see that. Also, did you see uh, did you see Boomich propose to his girlfriend? Yes. After like during the post match interviews, that was awesome. Uh, I heard she said yes because she wasn't there; she was home. But I believe she said yes. So congratulations to Boomich, major champion. She's all yelling no now, on her TV. <laughs> yeah. She's like no. You didn't get MVP. <laughs> get out of here. I'm going to go marry Simple. <laughs> Suck it. Look at Luke's. Re- what? You got him. You got him. <laughs> he's struggling. Luke's he's struggling. reflexes there, hey, folks. Hey, sorry. He's been, he's been hitting that hyper ice. He's looking nice and limber there, huh? Battle scar. There you go. The battle <laughs> scar. We won't talk about that. Yeah. But, uh, okay, congratulations to Simple. Yeah. Awesome to see it. Uh, finally has that major title and definitely very well deserved. Let's talk about the other tournament though that wrapped up over the weekend. We've been following it from front to back, doing our predictions and stuff, and your prediction ends up correct. I ended up wrong. Damwon were heavy favorites coming in. Pretty much everybody was saying 3-0 Damwon, maybe 3-1 EGG, maybe grabs a game. But EDG gets the upset 3-2 in what I would say is the best world's final we've ever had. Uh, and they did it. EDG finally in the year that they get past quarterfinals for the first time, they go all the way and win it all. What an incredible series that was. Super fun to watch. Obviously, way too early. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, made oh the, my gosh. really made the rest of the day kind of hard. Uh, yeah, we were all dragging around the office. Jameson almost missed the show. Like we were. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. So like we had the the Series E 10K, the Series E event 10K on Saturday, right? The night before, I had the day off work. I go to a Ducks game with my dad. I come home, go right to sleep because I know I want to wake up and watch. And then I've got to host the show that afternoon. So I'm up at five in the morning, watch the whole thing. As soon as it ends, I've got to go t- shower, get dressed, get into work to get ready for a two o'clock show. As soon as our show ended, I was just like, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm exhausted. It was the only way, but it was honestly totally worth it. Like you said, one of the best yeah. series we've watched in such a long time. Um, you know, I'm always, you know, just over here nerding out about uh, picks and bands. I think mm-hmm. the picks and bands were so fun to watch. I was like, oh, my God, look, everyone's using their brains this time. <laughs> like, everyone's, like, it's so fun to watch people counterpick each other mm-hmm. and, you know, be like, all right, well, if we ban these two, they have to pick that, which means we get both of these guys. You know what I mean? It was it was, it was such a chess match. In, mm-hmm. um, and honestly, the, the drafts, I feel like a lot of times the, I don't want to say that the draft decided every game, but, like, the draft was such a experience every game that I felt like at the end of it I was like, Oh my god! Like I was so stressed at the end of the draft because yeah. it was so back and forth. Um, I'd think that game. What was my favorite game? Three? Maybe one or three? Yeah. Were probably my favorite games. I think four and five were my least. I don't know. Wait. Mm. I thought four. Okay, two and four are my least favorite games. I know that okay. for sure. One, three, and five were probably my favorite games. I did like five a lot because it was pretty intense, but mm-hmm. I knew EDG was going to win like the whole time. So I kind of feel like one and three were my favorite games. I just as soon as they finished the draft for game five, I was like, "You gave Viper a Felios." Yeah. I'm like, "You were playing with fire right now, damn one." And uh, while I would actually say that Scout's Zoe in that game was an even bigger problem, uh, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, the the thing I'm really happy about, and it was one thing that uh, Fedius actually during the cast talked about, um, it was the fact that 
this wasn't and granted, I don't think EDG played uh, at their like peak level in Game 5, but for a majority of the series, I actually feel like Damwon played well. Just EDG showed up and played their best League of Legends of the tournament. Uh, specifically, JJ, who is their jungler, who their, their rookie jungler. This is a guy who replaced fucking clear love dude who is one of the <laughs> like most greatest, historic yeah. greatest junglers in the history of league of legends and jj was somebody who uh i think a lot of people felt like you could poke holes in his champion pool going into finals they felt like this is where damn one probably picks him apart especially considering the fact you're going against canyon who i would say is top two greatest junglers of all time and now you and you've got to go against that and jj came in and played specifically his best League of Legends of the tournament. Uh, I thought he played great, stepped up to the occasion. So I was very impressed, and I think that made it all the better for me, too. That EDG didn't just come in and, like, oh, damn one showed up, and then EDG got the win. Like, they both teams played incredible League of Legends all day, and EDG just came out on top. Yeah, the J4 stuff was crazy on the jungler side, you know what I mean? It was just I mean, like, he got it in one game one, and then they said, cool, like, you don't get to have J4. Well, anymore. that's what I'm saying. I was like, I was there like oh, wow. They're, like, I remember watching, because remember, I missed game one. Yeah. So I had to go back and watch it. I remember watching game one being like, you guys didn't really disrespect him that much. <laughs> you really just leave it there. Yeah. And then for the rest of the tournament, you just see it just... <laughs> like, all right, all right. We made it. Uh, all, right, all, right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> that shit's fucked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, that was super cool. Uh, it, was a, it was an absolute great series. Congratulations to EDG. Mm -hmm. I know that um, the uh, uh, China, right? LPL, yeah. China was going crazy. Dude, the I don't videos know if you saw all on the videos. socials yeah. were crazy. I was like, wait, don't mess it up, Luke. Which countries is China? Okay. Yeah. Um, the, uh, China, China was going absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. Just like everyone running through the streets, just almost, you know, just <laughs> it was a blast to, to look at all, just how excited the whole country was over the win. Yeah. Um, so again, huge congratulations to EDG, and I'm excited to see him run it back. So a couple of interesting fun facts. One, uh, it's been talked about over the last few years because since, you know, 2018, Korea took a bit of a dip uh, until obviously Dam won one last year, and it really right. seemed like Dam won just completely separated themselves from the rest uh, of Korea last year. That was more of like an anomaly. This year, we get three Korean teams in the semifinals, so it really felt like the resurgence of the LCK, and we finally got the Korea LCK final we've been hoping for for so long. And specifically, China was finally able to beat Korea in a grand final because. Uh, obviously, this is the third world championship for the LPL, but the previous two they won against European teams. So it really felt like China was finally able to conquer that demon and beat the LPL in a grand final. Uh, but another fun fact for you, uh, every year that TSM has qualified for Worlds, Korea has won. The three years that they haven't, which is 2021, 2019, and 2018, China, the LPL won. So well, well, it's because Korea didn't get the free win this time. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I thought it right. was great. That, Nobody like, clipped that. Okay. <laughs> Relax. It was a joke. <laughs> when that was like going around after the series on Saturday, Spika tweeted out and it was like, hey, Korea, like just get us the finals and, or get us the worlds and we'll hook you guys up next. Just year. give us a player, you know, <laughs> just slide over an import slot, bro. Come on. So good. Uh, just incredible. The tournament was awesome. I will say like, holistically over the tournament we actually didn't check it today so we'll uh we'll have an update for you guys on the next episode on how things panned out on our pickums we'll tell you who who won i i think it might be luke because did you do did you pick edg in your pickums as well okay so i think you might have won because you picked them in your pickums but we will double check on that and give you yeah, guys we the tied, verdict we tied on semis we tied on semis i won finals though you won finals uh i think we tied in quarters as well so it just depends on how things shook out with like groups i think you won finals. groups i did i think i won finals and we tied the rest so we'll, we'll see it's we'll, i think we'll it's gonna be close. right now we're calling it a wash it's close overall though i would say uh hands down best world's final ever it yeah. was the uh, only the second one to go a full five games uh would you say best world championship ever i would say yes I would say the quarterfinals were a dud, but other than the quarterfinals, the rest of the tournament I thought was incredible. That's hard, man. There's some like OG days. I would say like I think you can look back. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to say that. Like I, I just remember watching Worlds when I was so young. Sure. And it was just like so legendary to mm -hmm. see like TSM like trying to fight like the Giants. Yeah. You know, like and to be fair. 
we lost. <laughs> but <laughs> every, time. Every, every time. And the disappointment every time. But, you know, and then also, like, watching TSM lose, you know, mm-hmm. and you'd be like, oh, no way. And then you start seeing, like, Faker and all these gods, right, yeah. come out, and, and you're just like, who the is that guy you know <laughs> like so i don't know i, I feel like it's it's kind of hard to, to compare like the og days but i would say this has the, been the best world champion or um worlds for a long time sure and i think it, again it's hard to compare to the first couple because mm-hmm. of uh, you know you're walking into such a new landscape that it's like you know it's like uh, a kid looking at a candy you know yeah. it's like whatever you know like but um overall it, it was an absolute credible tournament and it's gonna be hard to top it yeah I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, the Valorant World Championship can do in Woo! December. We will talk about that more uh, in, in the lead up. That one's going to be fun. I'm hoping we can do some sort of, even if there isn't like an official Riot pickums. We'll figure it Luke out. Luke and I will do some form of pickums, some little competition there to uh, keep things. We should have wagered something. We'll, wager, we'll wager something next time. Some fun. Right. We'll make it. We'll make it a good time. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Maybe if you somebody win, else if you win I'll let you like sit on the couch for one episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I like my chair over here. It's my little spot. I'm um, just joking. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna do it now. Spoiler warning. Wee woo wee woo wee woo wee woo. Kyle, wee Kyle, if you're watching, just put like a uh, like a like the red alarm or whatever in my hand right here. Spoiler I'll, alert. I'll take two sombreros. Yes. Yeah, sp- <laughs> I don't know why. But <laughs> spoiler alert. We're going to talk about Arcane now. So if you haven't seen it. <laughs> pause and go watch it or you can just skip the rest of the episode all we're going to talk about the rest of the show is arcane and it's going to be heavy spoilers so take the time now walk away okay so how and if incredible you, <laughs> was arcane okay, real quick if you don't know what arcane is Netflix. Tell, tell the people what it is yes yeah, so uh riot announced this a couple years ago on their 10th anniversary of league of legends and it is specifically uh an animated series uh, in the world of League of Legends on Netflix, it is going to be a three-part series uh, released over three weeks. So they released Act 1, which is three episodes, this past Saturday. Act 2 is coming this coming weekend, uh, the weekend of the 13th and 14th. And then Act 3 will be the weekend following. So nine total episodes following uh, some characters you may know, Jinx and Vi, some others that you know that I won't spoil, but... There's some awesome characters in there. I'll just say, go watch it. Even if you don't like League of Legends, go on Netflix, go watch it. So my initial concept, I'll start with what you kind of say in there, is what I loved about the show so much is that you don't have to be a League of Legends fanatic to enjoy it. You don't have to know anything about the game, actually. Yeah. You, which you can, you can awesome. be completely removed from it, and, and this honestly could even introduce you into the genre, right? Because mm-hmm. what's cool about Riot's ecosystem is, one, they have a lot of different games that all exist in the same ecosystem. Mm-hmm. That's like if you're into, you know, slower strategy-based games, right? you got Legends of Runeterra, if you're into, or uh, TFT, for example, mm-hmm. or Team Fight Tactics, and obviously you got League of Legends, and you also have Valorant, if you're like on the, like, oh, I guess that's not the same ecosystem. It's but you know what I mean, not the point, world, you know what yes. I mean? Like, you got that on the opposite side of the spectrum. So, you know, I, I think that's super cool, be- and especially since the music and the art and the storytelling are all so powerful mm-hmm. individually that it really does carry itself um, as a show, which I thought was super cool. Um, my only complaint I have so far is mo- it's just Netflix, to yeah. be honest, because <laughs> I was telling you about this a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just like, when something new comes to Netflix, I just expect it to be there. So it's so funny. I, I, like, I like opened Twitch, and I opened up one of the streams so I could get the drops, mm-hmm. and I like opened another tab so I couldn't see anything because I didn't want any spoilers. And then I went into my uh, living room, flip on the TV, open Netflix. I'm like, boom, new to Netflix. Not there. <laughs> I'm like, okay, top 10. Not there. I'm like, okay, recommended for you. All I watch on Netflix is mostly anime. What's yeah. all recommended to me? Animes and video game stuff. What's not there? Not there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm blown. I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, where is it? I go to search for it. A- not there. AR, not there. <laughs> ARC, not there. I'm literally like, at that point when I typed in ARC and I didn't see it, I went to my phone and Googled where I could watch it <laughs> because I could have sworn it was on Netflix. And then, yeah. AR, you know, I finally type in the full name and it shows up and I'm yeah. all, I almost felt robbed <laughs> because it's like, you know, you could, you could release like the 15th shittiest romantic comedy and that's on my freaking front page. Yeah. I don't watch any romantic comedies on Netflix because they're all bad. Yeah. That's a fact. And, like, you can't even recommend me, like, the thing I want to see the most. And, mm-hmm. of course, you said it yourself, and I totally agree. Riot is crushing it. Mm-hmm. But it just, it just, it just, 
puts a bad taste in my mouth in general because it was a little I, weird. I, I, I feel like Riot was like, "Yo, Netflix, like this is gonna crush it," and, and Netflix was like, "No, it's not." Yeah, and then they're like, "No, it is." Watch this, and Netflix was like, "Good luck." It's weird. So, <laughs> so I, that's I mean, where my head's at. I mean, let's talk about the release first of all. Riot did an <laughs> awesome. Awesome Best show release premiere all time. for the game, right? They oh had uh, an hour-long pre-show from Riot headquarters where they interviewed uh, people, uh, like different Artists, voice, actors voice actors for the show, uh, the directors and producers. Music, they yeah. talked to uh, Rise and Trindamir, uh, the heads of Riot there, obviously, and, and we got a lot of in-depth discussion on that. And then literally they just live-streamed the whole first episode on Twitch. So literally anybody could go watch it. They had the drops. Uh, and I think it was perfect because Riot literally went, like, if people don't have Netflix, maybe they won't watch it. And they literally said, we'll just give them the first episode in a stream for free. A ton of people were able to co-stream it as well, which I think is awesome. I know Riot has really been kind of at the forefront of a lot of co-streaming stuff. And so tons of creators got to co-stream it as well. So they literally just blasted the entire world with Arcane. And even they in game, over, right? In yeah. game they had like Valorant Battle Pass. Yep. They had like, you know, even we've TFT had some stuff. Like they had all it. kinds of activations. They uh like on the Burj Khalifa, which is in I think uh that's in Dubai, I think. They had like this big thing projected all over, like the literally the tallest building in the world had Arcane all over it. They partnered with Love it. uh they're doing Among Us skins, I guess, are coming. They partnered with Rihanna's beauty brand, Fenty Beauty. They have a Jinx skin in Fortnite. All the Riot titles had stuff in them. PUBG Mobile even had, Riot, like, Arcane stuff. Like, they literally, all over the place. On Twitch, they had over uh, 1.5 million people watched Arcane on Twitch. Just so me, they just literally, goosebumps. dude, literally, Woo! they just went, we are going to show, they're like, we want everybody to see the first episode, and they're like, we know you're going to be hooked. I know the, like, the the two, like, main guys behind it were, like, really nervous. I'm like, bro, what were you nervous about? The first episode had me hooked so good, so fast. Yeah, I mean, outside of the launch itself, we're talking about the actual content of it. Like I yeah. said, I, I, I honestly think the music was my favorite part, mm -hmm. which is crazy to say, but the music was so like just so good yeah it's like just like destroyed me inside i was mm -hmm. just like it, it made you feel the exact emotion mm -hmm. that the scene was trying to pull out of you yeah um the animation's incredible i saw somebody tweet out that um someone was like i don't even know what the hell's going on or what it is but the animation i think it's really good you know yeah and somebody was just like it's our gamer eyes like we understand the appreciation of frames and there's so many frames per second in this god tier animation <laughs> Uh, and then the story, man. I'm a big Vi fan. I was a mm -hmm. Vi main, Vi jungle main for a yeah. while. Um, so uh, I thought it was super cool to like learn more about the backstory that I didn't know per se, all the different components of it, um, the origin of Jinx, all that kind of jazz. I thought it was super cool. Them working in random or random various characters from the um, from the lore into Caitlyn, Jace, Heimerdinger, uh, Victor, all those guys. Like I thought it was so cool and. Taking it even a step further and creating brand new characters to add to the lore and to kind yeah. of tie that story together, right? Because I assume when League of Legends was originally created, it came out with remnants of lore. It mm -hmm. came out with a very, like, loose definition, and now they're really kind of filling it in more and more. Mm -hmm. And this gives them such a... So it's an entire world, their universe. They have yeah. a whole universe to get a build around. So when you're creating a whole world, it, it's difficult. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like they've, they've done a really good job of setting us up and trying to understand the world. Mm -hmm. um, at least this part of the world, right? It's a very big world, I can only assume. But I, I have nothing but good things to say about it. I thought they did an incredible job. I think you guys should all go watch it. Uh, and I literally can't even believe how it ended. It broke me. Dude. Vander. Daddy. He had to, though. Dude. You know, oh. you know he was going down. What a homie, though, huh? Dude. To the end. Oh, man. I, I, I have so much to say about the show. Uh, a couple of Easter eggs. I wonder if you noticed. One... Did you notice their friend who's, I, I remember Milo, but I can't remember the other, the, the bigger yeah. boy's uh, name. Did you notice the goggles he wears? Okay, so those are, if you look at Vi's splash art, those are the goggles. No way. That Vi wears. Bro, as soon as I noticed that, I was like, and after episode three, I was like, no, that's why she wears the goggles. Because he's. Dude, I was I, I was wa when I was watching it, oh. I, I, was, I was sitting there looking at the two guys, and I was like, I was like, I don't know, like maybe like he becomes Blitzcrank. <laughs> you know, literally, I was thinking like maybe yeah. like he gets in a serious in incident, 
and he becomes Blitzcrank later yeah. on in the show because he's like a full robot essentially. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was like, man, but then obviously that last episode happens, yeah. and I'm literally like, oh, never mind, he's yeah. not Blitzcrank. Yeah. <laughs> he wears those are literally goggles. So that I got an Easter wears. egg. I got an Easter egg, right? Okay. Like so, the one, or I don't, I don't know if it's actually an Easter egg. It's more like foreshadowing, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I've been just playing a lot of TFT, and in TFT, there's a trait that's Enforcer. Mm. And Vi is an enforcer yeah. in the game, and I'm sorry, but looking at the show, yeah. I don't know how I could ever team up with the enforcers. And that's what, and that was an interesting question that I was like asking at first, like seeing those first couple episodes. I'm like, Vi becomes a police officer in Piltover. I'm like, how the hell do we get there? She fucking hates. Yes, them. dude, because she's literally like, I grew up knowing that I'm worse than them. I'm less. Yeah. Than, so how do you? Unless they somehow like mesh together and fix it all yeah which i hope happens because it would be way happier than what's been happening um i'm I'm, i just like i i don't know if is act two about the same storyline or is act two a whole different part of no 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 so uh, act the full arcane is going to be jinx and vi's origin story okay it's i just believe there are time skips so i think act two is going to be further in the future and then act three will be even further and be kind of like that final close on like now this is how they became who you know now when you play league so uh did you notice that uh a lot of people think that the scientist silko's partner the dude with like the purple stuff people think that's singed i agree i think that is singed when you look at it's the the guy who uh with the rat and the the cat remember he puts like the the cat in the box in like i think it's episode one that he does that oh yeah the old guy he's got like the crooked nose not silko right? right silko's got the messed up eye his partner that's okay. in the lab with him, I think that's singed. Because you see at the end of episode three when there's like the explosion and it cuts to him and like the fire's rushing at him. And then I looked at singed splash art, like his face is covered, his like mouth is covered. And you look at like his nose and his face and stuff. I'm like, and that I know looks that, like the same dude. I know that singed is a scientist also. Like I know that he is. And the purple smoke. I'm just like, mm, I think that's him. That's pretty cool. Uh, also, I think... A lot of people think that Vander might become Warwick. Because Warwick, I think if you, I think his lore is that Singed, I think, experiments on him, and that's how he becomes mm. Warwick. And I'm just like... I think that might be a reach, because be I'm pretty sure that they confirmed that Vander was a new character. So I think that, 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 might be, that, that, might, that one might be a stretch, but I believe the Singed one a lot. Yeah. I believe the Singed one a lot. I, thought, I was thinking, I was just looking for Jin. Oh, you get and you get to see his mask, right? You see his mask in like the shop. How about little Echo? Yeah. Dude, oh my so gosh, cool. dude. I keep forgetting Echo's in the show. Mm-hmm. Echo is awesome. I'm hoping we get more of him. Like yeah. he had he was very minor through the first three episodes, but I'm hoping we get to see more of him uh dude, as Echo the show comes continues. in at the end and he like opens the door after he's all like, you ben, know, they kill Benzo, dude, and I'm I like, Benzo, no! No! Benzo's all, what are you doing here? Go back to your <laughs> yeah. home. I'm all, Benzo, sit down! Run! And <laughs> say the same thing, and yeah. he just gets murked. He just gets ganked by yeah, that Yeah, that was dude. like the, you're about to die 101 scene, like, every yeah. time. I also thought it was really interesting, if you, like, go back and watch a lot of, like, the trailers and promotional material for the show, they're all a fucking bait. Oh, always. it's all yeah. a bait, right? Yeah. One of the one of the images that you see is like that image of like Jinx, or she's called pow- like Young powder. Jinx's powder, right? You see that image of her like in what looks like Vi's arms, and she's crying, and you're like, oh, it's like Vi keeping her safe, and you turn. It turns out that's not who's hugging her. It was fucking Silco, <laughs> and you're like, no. Yeah, that was that 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 was like the worst, right? When like Vi like pops off on her, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm all I'm all understandable. Yes. Little much. Understandable. Little much. I mean, she just killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understandable. Little much. And then and then to see, like, her, like, storm off, and then she turns around, she's like, oh, wait, no, and she tries to go back, and then she gets, like, chloroformed yeah. and, like, scooped out. I was like, no! <laughs> Villain origin story! Yeah. No! Like, I was like, please, Jinx, dude. Like, or, I was like, Powder, just see her. Like, yeah. Uh... Uh, and then freaking Silk goes all perfect. Yes, exactly as planned. I yeah. found a new toy to play with. So pretty interesting. Uh, I am I am very excited for the next batch. When's it come out? This weekend. So like this Friday coming or... weekend. Uh, I don't know if it's like Friday or Saturday, but we get it this weekend. I'm incredibly excited for it as well. I think uh, the first episode completely sold me. The next two just 
cemented it even further. I loved it. I'm excited. One thing I hope, because it would seem that what we're getting from Arcane, these like nine episodes we're getting, is going to be just a self-contained story. Like there's, I don't think there's going to be set up for like a season two. So my hope, because I think Riot and specifically League of Legends has an incredibly deep and diverse lore with so many different stories to tell. My hope is that we get an Arcane season two that's just a totally different story from Runeterra, right? Give me like the backstory of like Sharima, give me Azir and Zareth and that entire backstory. Or, you know, let me see like how Graves and Twist of Fate grew up and how you their like, you relationship go. You developed. You know we're going to Damascus. Give me a, yeah, like, yeah, that I whole thing. Demacia. Give me, let me see Silas and that entire thing. Yeah. Like, I think that the the lore of Runeterra is so good and has so much potential for great stories. So my hope is that this is not like a one-off thing and they go, okay, Arcane season two, we're going to tell the story of the Shadow Isles or we're going to go to Demacia or we're going to go to Ionia and tell these other stories because mm. there's so many great characters and the world is so well done. One thing we didn't talk about, just how like well developed the atmosphere is and how the world feels so lived in, like especially when you go down to Zaun, mm. dude, the just the environments were so cool. Yeah, I mean, the, again, the world building, right? Like dude. it all ties back to just how how much effort they're putting in, which is why I don't think it's a one-off by any means. Sure. It's like, I really do think that they're attempting to, you know, build a cinematic universe, mm -hmm. for lack of better terms, right? And I think that that's something where um, I've been really enjoying following Riot and everything they've been doing because they're just like, oh, we can do it all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we need to bleed into real media if we want to take a step further. They realize that they're, they probably realize that they're plateauing in a lot of the categories that they're in. And there's not, there's nowhere much, like, where do you go in League? Like, how do you go higher in League? Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, what next game? How many genres can we make games in? How many genres exist that we don't that we don't have the most popular game of that genre in? Two? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it gets to a point where it's like, okay, well, now we have this IP in this world, like, and they have the artists, clearly, mm -hmm. and the studio and the ability to do so. So I love seeing them um, expand into that space mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean we can use blizzard as an example of how to do it wrong yeah you know what i mean like you see them just always trying to copy or force someone else's like idea instead of actually putting in the work and creating their own environment from start to finish and really making it their own yeah i think it is i mean it was something that and i played league for over nine years now and something uh, that i didn't think about for a nine. long time I'm just kidding. yeah right <laughs> Fall of 2012 out in Texas. Um, <laughs> but something I didn't think about for a long time that I've now come to realize is that in the past, I never cared that much about like, I didn't have like a favorite developer or whatever. There were just IPs that I love where like if a new game and that IP came out, like I was going to play it. But I would say that Riot has, especially over the last couple of years with the release, and obviously they came out with new titles. We got Valorant, we got TFT, we got Legends of Runeterra. And now with things like Arcane coming out, uh, Riot has officially cemented itself as my favorite developer. I will, at the very least, try anything that they put out. I don't play fighting games. Guess who's going to play their fighting game when it comes out? I don't play MMOs. Guess who's going to play that MMO when it comes out? So um, incredible work from Riot. Um, hats off to all of the people that have put in now. I guess it's been six years that they've been working on Arcane, which is incredible. Hats off to... All the people at Riot that have put in all that time on it, uh, the people over at Fortiche, which is the studio that did all, all the animating for, animating for the show, uh, just well, well done. I'm so happy they are getting the praise that they well deserve, and I cannot wait to see Acts 2 and 3. I think it's going to be awesome. 1 out of 10. Oh, wait. Out of 10? What out of 10? I thought you said 1 out of 10, and I was like... 1 to 10. What do you got? Excuse me? Um, bro, it, feel, it feels like a cop-out. To but take 10? I, I, like, yeah. it's so good. The characters are so good. The world is built so well. It's beautiful. The voice acting is incredible. The story has me so invested. Like, I have a hard time finding, finding fault with it. And granted, it's early, right? It's only three of the nine episodes we're going to get. So, like, maybe my opinion changes, but... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. I'm, I'm a 10 out of 10. I thought it was fantastic. I think it was fantastic as well. Um, I would probably give it like, I'd probably give it like a good like 9.2, 9.3. Like okay. I think it's like pretty much there. 
Um, I think combat wise, they could have had a little bit more creativity when it comes to like the choreography of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it, they had a little bit of a difficulty because of how brute Vi is, and that it's they were really just trying to really show that she's just a mono y mono. Yeah come catch my fist kind of thing. Um, so I'm really excited to see uh, them get more into the magic stuff because mm -hmm. I feel like the, the, their uses of magic, like there was this one scene of the, the guy who just like when this thing started and there was like a mom and the daughter and the guy starts swinging his thing around and like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's all these runes going crazy and then the scene ended. I literally, me and Kels were like, what the hell just happened? Oh yeah, we were like, is that, I was like, is that Rise? Yeah, and literally then he, like, put his hand up and was like, his hand's not blue, that's not Rise. I literally was <laughs> like, are we watching like, Magic the Gathering, the TV show right now. Yeah, it was, so, like, it was Jace and his mom. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think that there was, like, some stuff there that I feel like was a little, you know, whatever. But um, I think I think that there could be a better three episode coming. Sure. So I'm going to – I got to reserve my ten because I don't want to pick – I don't want to give the first three episodes a ten and then love the next part more and be like, I'm screwed. <laughs> it's an 11 now. <laughs> like, so we're gonna, raising the scale. I'm going with a 9.2. <laughs> okay. Um – but I will definitely have to rewatch it. I only watched it all the way through, and uh, like that's one what and a half gonna, times. So I'm gonna, wanna, I'm gonna watch it again this week. I want to watch it again. Um, probably like once all the episodes come out, I'll probably do like a full binge through, mm -hmm. kind of get like the full experience, see if I missed anything, or I'm sure I missed stuff, but watch some more of it, um, and then I'll kind of give a critique at the end. But I'm gonna go nine two. Okay, we will definitely have uh, a couple of more arcane discussions over the next Every couple week. of yeah. episodes of the podcast because it's uh, it's really good. Um, Oh, quick That's, heads up also. Next week's episode will come out probably a little bit late. Yes. Uh, if you guys don't already know, uh, free agency for the League of Legends esports scene starts Monday afternoon. That's November 15th. And uh, Luke and I very much do not want to wait a week to talk about everything going on there. So uh, instead of recording on Monday like we usually do, today's Monday the 8th. We are going to do it Tuesday morning on November 16th to make sure that we can talk about all of the crazy initial news uh, in League of Legends free agency. So it may come out again a little later. So on don't Tuesday. panic. Yeah. If you miss us by an hour or two, we're coming. It's we coming. promise. <clears throat> we're working on it. Okay. It Kyle, edit faster. Yes. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> um, before we close, what are you playing? Who man, you know, uh, again, the riot train is on, so yep. I'm, I'm on that train as well. Big TFT guy, I've been grinding through that, uh, level to eight, then nine, you win the game. Um, <laughs> easy claps, don't buy one or two cost units, they're bad, uh, you're welcome. Uh, you just made it to diamond. All right, um, League of Legends, been playing a little bit of that. Obviously, we've been playing a little bit of Valorant, yep. been playing a little bit of that. Uh, me and Kales just recently started playing, you know, we're always playing random things. Me and Kales recently picked up uh, It Takes Two. Mm, or, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it takes two. Kyle um, was the one that was confused when we were talking about that earlier. Not you. Uh, you which right. is a <laughs> um, which is a free to play on Game Pass Ultimate game. Oh, okay. So if you guys have Game Pass Ultimate or you don't know what it is, you should wake up. But you should get Game Pass Ultimate, and it's mm -hmm. completely free to play on your computer or your Xbox. Cool. Um, and it's super fun. Like it's it's two player. Um, your guy and a girl. You're like a married couple who's like trying who's like gonna get divorced, and the daughter like makes a wish, and you turn into like dolls. Essentially, like refined love, I assume. Yeah. And it's super funny. It's like super quirky and all that stuff. The um, the animation, the arts, uh, gorgeous and super fun. And the controls are perfect. Okay. I'm be honest. I play way too many different games that completely don't know what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. blind. Their UI is terrible. None of the buttons do what they all do in every other game. This game is exact which thing. You want to double jump? You press A twice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like stuff like that, right? Where it's, it's like it's a super low barrier, but if you can't get over that barrier, Luke is gonna body you. Well, it's true though, you know, yeah. it's one of those things where it's like we're trying to play a game. I'm not trying to like I don't want a forty five minute learning uh, ratio on a co op fun game. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I don't really want that on any game to be honest, but you take what you get. Um but it's been it's been super fun. Me and Kale's cruise through like the first two boss levels. Uh, we you know, you fight like your vacuum cleaner that you you know, decided to not fix and instead bought a new one. And then you fight your tools that you got rusty in your toolbox, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Super, super like quirky stuff, but super cool. Would highly recommend to anybody who um, has a buddy or a girl or a whatever that would you be interested in kind of playing another game with because it is, it's like, it's really fast paced. It's super challenging. It's like, it's like a, it's like a platforming portal game. Okay. Super cool. Big fan. Uh, so I've been playing that a little bit. And then uh, on my solo grind, uh, I'm still, Working through New World, trying to hit 60, and playing Metroid Dread still. Nice. So I got a lot going on. Yeah. I've been uh, I've been all over the Riot titles as well. Obviously, you and I have been gaming a lot together this week. Uh, TFT, 
man, I'm trying. I'm trying. It is, I want to love it. I remember loving it when it first came out, but it feels so unfriendly to the casual player. Yeah. And I just, I also, I just suck. I am not good at TFT, so. But to... it's been all right. It's been fun to, fun to game with you, and we've been playing League and having a good time playing League and Valorant, so. Um, yeah, we'll see. It's a lot of Riot titles right now, and now I'm just waiting for uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl to come out. Woo. Still still working on my Pokedex and Sword. It's going to take me a little while, but that's okay. But uh, it will be my first time playing the Sinnoh games. I did not play the original Sinnoh games, so I'm actually very, very excited having gotten very much back into Pokemon over the last six months. I'm very much looking forward to playing those. You should be excited. They're incredible. I'm looking forward to it. That's going to do it for us here, folks. 12 episodes of Eat, Speak, Compete Down, and plenty more to come. Uh, if you want to listen to our episodes, remember we're on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and you can find the videos of the episode over on YouTube. Just search Esports Arena. You can follow us on all of our socials and check us out at esportsarena.com. Luke is at Shimonahe on Twitter. If you ever want to reach out to him, ask any questions, give us your thoughts on the show. I am at Castor Yeso, and that is all. Have a great rest of your week. We will see you to talk about Act 2 of Arcane, League of Legends Free Agency, and a bunch more stuff next week. Have a good one, guys.